Hello, Jezu. Um, this is Father Kaiser, obviously, and um, we want to start something called Fireside Chats, where there'll be just casual conversations. Um, where we'll talk about anything um, that you guys propose to me. Um, you can uh, send in your answers or your questions, I should say, um, by email on the weekly email that comes out. And I'll give it a shot at answering some of them. Um, I hope this will be a casual and fun conversation and very relaxed. Um, and so, why don't I start? Um, we had a, we've had several questions, and um, some of them are quite good, actually. They're all quite good. Um, one of our parishioners asked about the examine and said, you know, this is a really hard prayer, and I don't really understand it. So I thought I'd say a few words about the examine. First of all, St. Ignatius thought that the examine was an incredibly important prayer, and he thought that of people who are very spiritual and in touch with their spiritual life, it was the most important prayer where you would pull back a couple times a day and look at your day and see where you found God or maybe where you were tempted. And so there'd be two quick check-ins during the day to see where you are, probably the middle of the day, maybe before going to bed, and then asking for God to help you. Now, a lot of our high schools do the exam every day, and it ends up being, sometimes it's different from school to school, but sometimes it can be a pretty structured thing. And if you go online and Google exam and St. Ignatius exam, you'll find a very deliberate structure where you put yourself, make yourself quiet, ask for God's grace, ask for God's um, enlightenment, and then you go through the day slowly to see how, where God has been, um, and, um, and see where you've been tempted, and then ask God for forgiveness, etc. Sometimes, I'll be really honest, I've taught this a million times. I don't do it like that. Here's how I do it. I always say, God, help me look at my day. That's all I do at the beginning. And then I just go through and think of the conversations I had with people. So like this morning, I had a quick conversation with someone uh, when I got my coffee early this morning before the sun was up. Um, saw someone on my way from uh, Shell House over to Jezu. Um, when I got to Jezu, I talked to someone in my office, in the office here, and had a brief conversation, wearing a mask, of course. Um, so if I do my exam, I would think of those things. How was my prayer this morning? Did I have any interactions with anybody that brought up any kind of joy or happiness? I'd say, oh yeah, it was so good to see this particular person in the office because I haven't seen her in weeks. Um, or maybe the prayer was just really meaningful. Um, today, I haven't done a whole lot, but I'm sure I've been tempted by the evil spirit, so maybe I was tempted to be unkind or to have an uncharitable thought about someone. So when I go back and say, how was my day? I might look at that and say, hmm, I had, a, I, I had an unkind thought today. Um, I was thinking in myself something that was really uncharitable. And then I usually just say, Thank you, God, for helping me see the good things of the day and to also recognize my temptations. I usually do that all at once, though. I don't usually do it in steps, meaning when I have this conversation with this woman this morning, which is really nice, you know, to be with her. When I come back, I just say, oh, those are all the ways that God touched me today. Let me be grateful. And then at the end, I'll say, what are those things where I was tempted? Maybe to the darkness. And then I say, Lord, you know, please forgive me and give me hope and give me grace that I can do it again. So I don't think the examine has to be any big structured prayer. It's just the habit of thinking through your day. Who did you talk to? Where have you encountered God's joy, grace, love? Where have you felt good about talking to a child or something like that? You may say, talk to my daughter on the phone today and it was just so good to talk to her or something like that. And say, oh gosh, Lord, it made me remember how much I love her. What a great gift she is in my life. And you may likewise also say, why do I always struggle to be kind to that person? Or why did I share that story that I shouldn't have shared? What is it inside of me, Lord? You know, that's the evil spirit tempting me. God, give me the grace to go against that. I think the examine is an incredible prayer. And it makes, it makes your prayer life tangible. God's always present. And so is the evil spirit, actually. We're always tempted. And so the examine enlightens what's happening in, our, happening in our lives each and every day. Really a, 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 a wonderful prayer. Um, if that answers your question, um, let me know. Um, second question, which is really, really wonderful, was why do we say 
Jesus rose again from the dead. Did he, did he rise twice? Why do we say in the Apostles' Creed, in the Nicene Creed, he rose again? It's even in the scripture. If you go to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14, you'll find it says Jesus died and rose again. That is, of course, if you're looking at that particular transla translation. Some of the translations of the, exact, of the exact same verse don't say that at all. They just say he rose. I speak Spanish, so I looked at my creed in Spanish, and I realized it doesn't say he rose again. It just says he rose. So then I looked at the creed in Latin, both the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. Guess what? It just says he rose. So why do we say rose again? I don't have a great answer for that. It's clearly a linguistic thing that makes a linguistic add-on that makes it more important. And it might be related to something like this. How many times have you said, oh, my son got knocked down, but he got right up again. Or I fell, but I got right up again. Um, that again just emphasizes that we did it. So. Next time you pray the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, notice it says he rose again. I think it's for emphasis. He rose from the dead. This is the moment that changed the followers of Jesus. It changed them from being afraid, uncertain, um, denying of Jesus. They had such a profound experience of him that it's not just he rose from the dead. He rose again. He rose. It's an emphasis. He really, truly rose, and it's something that we should remember. So, well, next time you say the Nicene Creed, or the Apostles' Creed, or read it in the Scriptures, He rose again, it's emphasizing. Jesus rose from the dead, body and soul. They saw Him, they touched Him. He was dead, but He rose again. Hope that's helpful. Send in some more questions. I'd love to answer more of them. This is going to be really fun. You can send in fun questions, too, if you'd like. Have a great day, Jesus.